So, uh, Chris, if if you're not aware, maybe we'll start the episode here. Um, okay. We we have um, started a new era of blockbusted, if you will, where Ooh. now that we're back, we're kind of we're we're instituting. Uh, a I, see, new I see what brand. you did there, Houston. You were you were checking to see if he's listened to our previous episode, which he I was, hasn't. wasn't I? Son of a gun. Gotten confirmation. <laughs> Don't stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our new era of blockbusted, though, is is what we're what it's what's dawned. It's basically us um, having less defined topics. We're we're not trying to live up to the Weekly Planet anymore. We're just talking, <laughs> rambling. We're not like okay. going to be like, here's the news segment, here's the letters segment, here's the whatever segment. We're just going to talk for like what 30, 45 minutes today. and see what happens. <laughs> right. We're just gonna we're just gonna do whatever. We're and also. We're trying to have more guests on, so you and know, you are one of those. Hopefully, peeps. the first of of many. <laughs> I am honored. Oh, yeah, good. You better be. But that said, despite my thing that I just said, which is that we don't have topics today, we have a topic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh. Today so we're well, self overarching something. Already. Yeah. Should we introduce Chris as nah, as a, a friend of the show, nah. if you will? <laughs> everybody knows who I am. Know. Yeah, everybody knows who Chris, a uh, yeah. Chris yeah. EY2 is. In this, uh, <laughs> this 10 part series of uh, Blockbuster between Drop Bears. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's Drop <laughs> oh, Bears Civil War, if you will. And then at the end, we have everybody on all at once. Exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, we're, we're secretly in Discord right now. And just We're going to get Suggs up in this joint, and everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, he's just That's, muted right now. I I only come on Discord when like there's like three people or four people max on because like I can't take the 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 thing where I'll I'll think I'm I I'm saying something and everyone's listening like everyone's just fallen silent and they're listening yeah. to what I'm saying and then I find out that everyone else was talking over me it's just breaking up and I can't hear them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like Discord like that because like it mutes yeah. everybody when you're talking and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then it cuts That's you off. Obnoxious, yeah, right. But uh, Chris is a friend of friend of Drew and I, friend, of, friend, friend of the podcast, friend of the show, if you will, and we have known him for several years, I think, oh through, boy. through Twitter and stuff. Man, oh boy, um, Chris and I have had on, yeah. many impassioned political debates and disagreements I, on Twitter. I, I, although no. I dare say that uh, the past few weekends or past few days have brought us together more than ever before. So much so, <laughs> very much so. And then there's yeah. Hitchcock, so. Oh, of course. You, you didn't yeah. even get into it. I know, man. I was <laughs> I was chilling at the SAT jam all day. Hitchcock is the most chill person you will ever meet. And it's not I that re- he doesn't have political opinions. It's just that he doesn't care about voicing them. He's just like, oh, look, I'm not getting into this. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't you think were, we were saying you remember something, honestly. Chris? What were, what were you saying? I, I remember how me and when the first fight me and you got into <laughs> like, was how we met. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I stole your Iron Man 3 mock design and you like oh, called course. me out on it. Like, <laughs> That's you, he left a comment plagiarism. on plagiarism. When I was 13 yeah. years old, um in in p- uploading uh Lego mocks of Iron Man scenes yeah. to YouTube, Chris commented on, on one of my videos. What did you comment? I don't even know. I was like, probably this is cool. And then I find made my own version of it. I, I think it was like, this is cool. Can I can I use the same idea or something? And I responded like, sure, as long as you give credit or something. <laughs> and I had already made the video or something. Right. <laughs> so, oh, you know, that's, that's that's how it rolls when you're 12 and 13 years old on, on the great interweb. Did I remember discussing world. that mock with you when, uh, when Iron Man 3 first came out? And that was like yeah. the first time we started to hang. Well, yeah, Drew and I, being cousins, we've known each other since birth. <laughs> yeah, there, we, we, there are us photos like, of us like as babies. Olds, yeah, yeah, but um, we we really didn't have that much of a close relationship, if you will, yeah. until about 2013, when we mm. both went to see Iron Man three on opening day. Uh, yeah. We best were at MCU family movie. reunion. Yeah, best. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. No, but uh, in class, most underrated rolling. MCU, maybe. Ah. <laughs> uh, in but, classic yeah. Coley style, we got there like 10 minutes late, and Iron oh, Man yeah. was just That's not classic up. Coley style. That's an exception for me. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we, you, you're a late I, guy, so. <laughs> I do remember that you went and saw it again a couple days later with your family, and you were like, oh yeah, we missed a lot. Because we missed like the entire flashback with Tony at New yeah. Year's Eve the first time we yeah. saw it. So we were just like, what? Just, yeah, we, we nice. came in on the, de- on the bit where he's... Uh, calling his armor to him to suit up in the armory or whatever downstairs he's, he's jamming the jingle bells or whatever yeah i saw it on like the last weekend of its theater run i think oh yeah okay yeah 
yeah. we Drew and I determined once that though uh, it's always it's always been the the uh, hypothetical fact that I am the bigger movie fan than he is. <laughs> he actually saw Avengers before yeah. I did. <laughs> Nice. And so ah. that that Don't that was a massive trump card. One day we mm-hmm. figured that out. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, um, again, we're we're not trying to like direct the conversation too much. Chris and and Chris is here because we do have a topic though, which Chris, Chris is, is interested here. in. Right. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have strong which, opinions in this. Field. Strong opinions. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I mean, you should know that. You've seen my Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I think I think the topic for this episode. Is going to be movie soundtracks and the best movie soundtracks, if you will. I think. I think. <laughs> That's if, the plan. if we can maintain the the track on one on one on one way, um, and expect quite a bit of of humming throughout the episode for <laughs> when I say, "Oh, remember that great theme," and then everyone goes, "No, I don't remember that theme," and I feel the need to hum it instead. Right. <laughs> Yeah, because you know we can't we can't actually put the actual thing in because it's copyright, you know. Oh yeah, that's true. Like imagine you're just gonna you're gonna hear the faint sound of me pulling up Spotify in the background. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be pretty good. Uh, excuse me, what, what I'm googling my uh, Apple Music. Okay. I mean, look, this is for the purposes of commentary and review, so re- really we can we can play anything that we want. <laughs> Got that's how that rolls, right? That sounds like yeah. it works, right? Um. But yeah, so Chris, okay. what are I feel like I feel like even though I don't want to steer the conversation now, we have to steer the conversation to avoid awkward silences. What mm-hmm. are some of your favorite movie soundtracks on 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 the planet Earth, if you will? So um, you know, you got your my, my John Williams pick. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do like a different person each time. Okay, I think. there we go. Like my, my, we go. My, my my John Williams pick is gonna be Empire Strikes Back. Because you got your best, your best Star Wars track ever in there. Yeah. You got Asteroid Field, and I'm hyped for that in Solo. Oh um, yeah, okay. it's the only. And Williams I'm is developing a, his own theme for. Han I or think something. I think he's just extending the Asteroid Field theme. Hmm. So the da 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 da. I think yeah, I think okay. he's I think he's dragging I think he's dragging that one out to make a full theme. So okay. I, that's why I'm excited. That could um, work. Yeah, and then because Jake- then you know, then it w- then it would be consistent instead of having this one theme that only happens in one movie. <laughs> oh yeah, than, you know yeah. it's gonna be so weird that like Chewie's gonna get a theme, but like it'll oh, never yeah. show up again. Yeah, yeah. wait, Unless is Williams do doing that. is Williams doing solo? No, no uh, John Powell's doing it. Okay, and okay. Will- and Williams is just he came in to like do the Han theme or something. Nice. Nah, okay, that's cool. That's fair enough. John Powell is really good. Like he's, yeah, yeah, his work sure. on How to Train Your Dragon and Kung Fu Panda is oh my phenomenal. Goodness. Chicken oh, Run. Your dragon is <laughs> chicken Run. Oh yeah, I haven't listened to the Chicken Run soundtrack in quite some time. It's a good. It has a good opening title theme. I think. Does it? Oh good. Yeah. I love obscure movie soundtrack references. <laughs> chicken Run. Is chicken not obscure, Runs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I remember watching that movie as a kid a ton. Like I would, I would always be terrified by the scene where they're about to be turned into pies with the giant oh, so machine. Good. So good, that was yes. horrifying. But yeah, so I haven't good. seen it in, in many years, away. so I need to need to rewatch. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, no! I remember <laughs> Flushed Away being the significantly underwhelming sequel to Chicken Run, not in terms of canon, but in terms of look, it's animals in cartoon in clay. Like the, it's it's the sequel. You get, yeah, you just get the same vibe, you know. Yeah. Right. And it's creepy in a way, and sci- and kind of like unsettling at times. Well, like you, That's... you think you think me with doing like stop motion stuff, you think I'd like that kind of movie, but I don't think I've liked a single stop motion movie I've seen. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Although the then Lego again, movie which looks like stop motion but isn't. Yeah, but that, like, that's you know that's mm, that's good though. I yeah. still have a lot of um a lot of friends who like. I'll, I'll mention a Lego movie, and they think that it was actually animated in stop motion. Yeah, same. That animation same. is that good. Yeah, yeah, I've had to argue that point several times. <laughs> I'm trying to think what stop motion movies I I do like. Because my dad loves Chicken I mean, Run for some reason. The, the only yeah. consensus of people that like a stop motion movie is Fantastic Mr. Fox. I feel like, and I, oh, I yeah. haven't seen it yet. And yeah. Isle of Dogs. No, yeah, you need yeah. to see Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love no, Fantastic heck, Mr. Yeah. Fox. Yeah, have you not seen it? Jeez, I haven't. No. Jeez, That's God, not qualified geez. to be on here, man. Down the geez. hole. It's not like I only just rewatched it for for the first time since I was a kid, like a month ago. <laughs> That's me with the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's, it's got a week. nice soundtrack oh, as yeah. well. 
on on, yeah. the, on the topic of soundtracks, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Oh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, yeah. I mean, Alexander Desplat, he did, yeah, he did Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, I think Desplat is one of the most versatile composers. Yeah. yeah. Like he's yeah, done such a variety of stuff. Like you listen to the Harry Potter soundtrack, and then Isle of Dogs, which is like Japanese drums, and then Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is like this quirky kind of stuff. The folk it's just stuff. so yeah. varying. Yeah. It's so good. But um yeah, yeah I'm trying to think of talent. like a stop motion Shape movie of that Water I truly he think did. is great. Oh yeah, he did Shape, he did of, Shape of, of Water. Shape of Water has good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, that's a that's a ten out of ten soundtrack, let me tell you. Yeah, it's good. I didn't I, think I'd like it, but That's the funny thing about stop motion movies is that like that they're so heavy on, on they spend so much time on the animation oh. that, you know, oftentimes the story is kind of weaker or weekend. And yeah. maybe that's because they feel like they have to restrain the story based on what they can feasibly animate, you know? But uh-huh. yeah. even even the ones that I feel like are more ambitious, like Kubo and the Two Strings, have such weak storytelling that I'm like, mm-hmm. like uh, this is this looks amazing, and I want to be impressed by how much work was put into this, but I just don't feel anything, you know? Yeah, that would make sense, though. So. Yeah, but I um I I do like Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> yes, the OG. <laughs> The Curse of the Were Rabbit. That's pretty oh, good. That's so good. I saw that in the theater, man. Really? Yeah. I remember watching that many times on my uh, in in the car of my grandparents, where they had that's that so on good. DVD. That was the only DVD they had in their car <laughs> to watch on their portable player. Classic or grandparent move, right there. Uh huh. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that was me, but uh, Shaun the Sheep. So that's it. Oh yeah. Oh, I got some friends that absolutely adore Shaun the Sheep. I'm like, and they're like, you need to watch it. You need to. I'm like, what? Really? It is you, good, really? actually. Really? That's really the funny thing. It it came out the huh. same year as like Minions and stuff, and there have been some comparisons between the two. Where Minions and Shaun the Sheep are both like c- almost silent movies with these characters who don't speak, and just it's about physical comedy and whatever. But uh. the distinction between the two is so clear because Minions is, and I think I'm paraphrasing Ralph the Movie Maker on all these points, but <laughs> Minions is like phenom- is horribly told and just ridiculous jokes, and then. Shaun the Sheep is like this phenomenal Charlie Chaplin esque physical comedy and yeah. and just really clever stuff that's universally funny to anyone of any age. So huh. yeah, the, really art <laughs> the art of Shaun the Sheep. Oh yeah, of... <laughs> do they have an art of book for Shaun the Sheep. I'd buy that. Uh, I bet you they do. <laughs> Chris, do you have any art of books? Any concept art books? I have uh, Last Jedi and Guardians Two. Mm-hmm. So nice. that Guardians Two one is incredible. It's so yeah. good. It's got all those the artwork of the of the sex bots on the casino planet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. It's pretty good artwork. <laughs> yeah, you know what Houston does in the street then? Hmm. Oh, that that had implications that I'm not okay with. <laughs> goes, goes to his art of book. He just he just yeah. loves his 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 uh his Guardians Two art of book. You know. Jeez. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I um I I have a lot of those art of concept yeah. art books, but I I end up putting them on a shelf. I like look at them for like a week and like constantly browse through them, and then I put them on a shelf and never look at it again for like a year. Yeah, and, and I feel then like you come back they're called like later coffee table like, books. Yeah, you come back and you're yeah. like, yeah, I, should, I should probably look through these. You know, I think right. I, mean, I, I feel like I should get more enjoyment out of this like product the that day. I spent forty five dollars yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I feel like the, I should uh, buy a table, a coffee table specifically <laughs> to the... put these books on, so that they get more exposure. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I bought the <laughs> or I got the Force Awakens one from uh, for Christmas back in the day, and then after I was like, I gotta get, I gotta have the all the Star Wars one now. I gotta get the Last Jedi and then Episode Nine, you know. And I just having, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I just, eh. yeah, <laughs> it's just sitting on my shelf. Last Jedi yeah. one's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Last yeah, the last year, I like to get that one. I There's like the to art of the porgs turning on the lightsaber to kill <laughs> yeah, that's, themselves. That's, nice. that that's the best good. art. <laughs> I like to get the Guardians one, and then also the Blade Runner 2049 one. You know, the Blade Runner 2049 one is probably my favorite because yeah, yeah, it looks it, so cool. It's not just art; like it's got so much great concept art and beautiful concept art, but it also has a lot of behind the scenes images and like explanations and text for how they achieve certain effects and like yeah, so even cool. examinations of the technology used and stuff it, it's really good so i do appreciate books like that that are more than just pretty pictures but actually have something to read mm-hmm. you know yeah for but sure. yeah that guardians a, 2 one is great yeah i have a friend who had to make one of those like for their their stop motion project for school like they had to do a full-out concept art like type Whoa. stuff Dang. and make a whole book out of it 
I was like, a book that based seems on like a movie that work. they'd made or made up based on a movie yeah. that they liked. So like their their term project or whatever was was like a Star Wars stop motion video, right? Uh, and they did they did document everything, like every part of the concept, every part of like the designs and stuff. That's pretty good. And they like, I mean, it's hard, but every, that's cool. Like the sets, they had to like describe like the planets and like the locations and stuff, and like have yeah. like they ended up CGI rendering like a bunch of stuff too. So they had like, cityscapes. So I was like, this seems like too much work. Yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy nice, so. documenting the I enjoy documenting the process um, a lot more than I used to. With with Long Walks Breakup, I I wasn't really thinking about much of that and. So I'm pondering like doing a behind the scenes on Longbox, but the problem is there's really not that much behind the scenes footage that we have. Um, mm-hmm. But with Paradoxical, which is the short I'm working on now, I specifically have a person every week getting behind the scenes footage. Um, and so theoretically, if I want to do some kind of behind the scenes video sometime in the future to show people how the movie was made or like inspire them or whatever, then there would be more, be more B-roll of us making the film that I could actually That's, use, mm-hmm. you know. So Dude, nothing. I, also, I can't. I don't have time to manage it myself. But I'm just like get just capture whatever's going on. <laughs> just, here, just do this just for me. Turn turn the camera right. on, man. Just just do something. You yeah. know, you're you're. you're and not they're doing also anything. the the interesting thing about paradoxical is that there's a lot of like I can't spoil too much, but like there's <laughs> a lot of like alternate timeline stuff going on where you see things happen in different ways from different perspectives. So with their that that same B-roll person, I'm saying get behind the scenes footage, but also when you can get like whatever shots you think are interesting from a different angle than than we're getting it as long as you're out of our frame you know so that then i have more material to cut in that's like alternate things of the same take and stuff you know the more i hear about this the more confused i get oh yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's it's whack dude it's it's i'm sure when you see it it will be not be any less confusing (laughs) it's hype though yeah but i'm i'm excited for it yeah it's 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 the most, like, it's the least character-driven short I've ever written. Like, there's really not much plot to go on and not much writing, um, which is unfortunate. But I, I wanted to do something that I'd be able to like. Kind it's of more about the different... spectacle, you know, the advent. It's, it's more about, about the, the experience, you know, exactly <laughs> what Houston loves. But hopefully, it will be a, at least a little bit thrilling, even if it's mm. not like a moving drama. <laughs> but like. It will have an emotional core, and it will be a little bit thrilling, I hope. And it is somewhat of an excuse just for me to kind of experiment with different types of things and different technology that we have and different um, mm-hmm. ways of making a short film. So I don't, I don't, don't. it's not going to be the peak of my abilities, of storytelling abilities, but hopefully it will be the peak of my current filmmaking abilities, there if that there we go. makes any sense. <laughs> a good time. Yeah. It'll, it'll also, yeah. as I hear, have a killer soundtrack, bruh. Mm. <laughs> it's mm. true. I've been talking to a few people about. Oh, hey, have you now? Getting shoot, I did not actual, know that. <laughs> an actual original soundtrack for it. I'm just, I'm just trying to get it back time. to soundtracks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know it was a good segue, but I'm taking it right back. <laughs> Oof. Hard on the head. I, I I would so love to have a short film where even in the short there are like a couple motifs to go through. That would be, that'd, that'd be, be so really good, cool, man. Ugh. Be Chris, awesome. you know what? Just stop dedicating your time to like stop motion. Just like become a musician. Gosh dang it! That'd be pretty Come good. On. I've thought about out. it. Just help Are us you good out. at music, Chris? You you play in your school band or something, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. What I instrument do you play? play? Yeah. Uh, I do trombone. So. Okay. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Oh yeah. I, I actually have a friend oh, yeah. who's who's quite quite good at that music stuff. Oh, that music stuff. That music <laughs> stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I've thought about like wanting to write themes and stuff though. It's just so such like oh, it's so yeah. hard. You need to dude. know too much. Yeah, you need to know so much and it's like time and. I right. feel like I'm too late. I feel like I'm too late to like <laughs> exactly. understand it all. You watch like these childhood prodigies that are just like <laughs> just whizzes on the piano. I'm like, yeah, well, screw me, you know. So yeah, exactly. that was because I took piano for four years and uh, haven't taken <laughs> oh it gosh. in about two or three or two or three years since. Um. And I've forgotten most of what I knew, <laughs> unfortunately. Oof, yeah. But like, yeah, it was. I love music, and I think I'm, I'm, I, I, I am very um, passionate when it comes to hearing music and discerning mm-hmm. different themes in it. And I, I do think I understand music, but there was just too much technicality and rules to learn that I found it overwhelming and more 
I don't know, for, for me personally, more trouble than it was worth, you know, yeah. where there were other mm. creative things that I was better at that I thought I should invest my time in, you know, than, than actually playing music. I was content for with sure. just enjoying it. So I just kind of phased out of the piano, so. <clears throat> oh, yeah, because yeah, when was the last time you played piano? You've been I mean, I took uh, a little dormant. Last... I mean, yeah, I was, ta- I was taking it sophomore year, so a year ago I was still taking it. I mean, you would call me on FaceTime and be playing the Interstellar theme at times. That was <laughs> the only a rare yeah, it's, it's the only song I can like play fully by memorization, <laughs> man. It's the only one worthy though, you know, because the greatest ever. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, I could never uh, do piano. Back to really, what do you find yeah, hard about I've, it? I've been doing piano since like six years old or well, something. So the funny thing, the funny thing with trombone is it's the only instrument my parents could convince me to play because it didn't ha. have keys or buttons or anything. Because <laughs> okay. we had to do we had to do a recorder in elementary school, right? So in like Dude, fourth heck grade, yeah. four, third or fourth grade, we had to do a recorder and I was really bad at it. Yeah, I did too. And I was, yeah. was convinced I was convinced because it had it was because it had the holes and the buttons or whatever. So when we had yeah, to yeah. like sign up for instruments for band, I was like, well, there's only two that doesn't have buttons or holes. And I was like, so it's either going to be drums or that slidey one. <laughs> and so, so here I am. Nice. <laughs> That's where it's at, man. I, I would like to play drums just because other than learning how a beat works, like there's not much to really get crazy good, like much to learn. You just have to be good at using your hands quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? There's a, it's yeah. really, but that was, really crazy. That was actually my problem with, with piano was not just that I didn't like the rules, but also that, honestly, I just found it hard to play with... Like, I'm a terrible... Like, hard um, to physically do it. Hard to physically do it. Like, yeah, <laughs> sometimes the the music the music notes would say, you have to put this finger here and this finger here. And I'm like, my hand can't stretch that far. <laughs> yeah. I have to be Mr. Fantastic to do this. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Like you just imagine little Houston just whining, like, why he can't stretch that far? Not little Houston. It was like 14-year-old Houston. <laughs> yeah, little Houston, you know? it's It's been a few years. Yeah. That actually does baffle me how a tiny little Asian kid could be could be <laughs> stretching their hand that yeah, you far. Have, like, how, no how are your hands Houston. large You're enough like, to even wow. do this? You're saying, I physically Houston. can't do this. And then this Houston kid's over can... here, like, with, like, the hands the size of your finger. It's like, no, you can't, you can't say Houston anything. Houston confirmed a racist. Yeah. Houston confirmed racist. <laughs> Oof, that's not racism. That's just a fact. <laughs> uh, have y'all watched that? Um, the the kid Twitter. prodigies. There's a kid prodigy show on on TV right now where they're like, "Look, kid, do this pattern, memorize this pattern, then recite yeah. it back to us." And the kid does it, and, and everyone's like, "Whoa!" Like that's that's the show. That's yeah. the whole premise. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's it's cheese ball, man. It only like succeeds in making me show. jealous, but you know, <laughs> making me feel bad about all my life achievements. Right, you know? I think that's the goal of the show. <laughs> yeah, just tear Americans down, you know. Because like half the people watching are past eighteen, they can't go back in time and be good at this as a child. So yeah. they've missed their window. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so literally, you're not you're not t- you're not looking at an audience and being like. Yeah, you can be as good as these kids are. They're, you're being like, look, these practice, kids are this good right now, and what are you doing? You're sitting on your couch. No, you have no chance to beat them because they're in your past. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, I don't got time for that. I got I got Fortnite to play. Oh, no. You do, Hitchcock. I do not. <laughs> Infinity War is coming to Fortnite, so I got to get in on that. So. Heck, or have you played yeah, Fortnite, man, tomorrow. Chris? Tomorrow. I've not, actually. Me Chris, neither. How have you not hopped on this bandwagon? No, not I. All right, I'll, I'll say this. I've been playing Fortnite since like the week it came out, so I'm not a bandwagon. I'm not. I'm not a part of that yeah. stuff. But, but you know what? You are obsessed. Every no, time I don't, I don't we have to wait on you to play Fortnite to, to do this episode, Hitchcock. Playing. That's how. Uh, that's why I don't have it. <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago, I was playing an hour to two hours a night. So, uh, oh no, I haven't been playing this near as much though. So. Like, look, I, I procrastinated all my schoolwork from from this week to, like, last night. If I had Fortnite on top of that, I, I don't think I would even be going to school. Like, if I had to play, if I had an obligation to if play I had an this obligation video to play game? Fortnite. I, I do feel that way, though. If I downloaded it, then I would have an obligation to play it with you and stuff. And then I feel bad when I didn't. So, like, I can't, I just can't get into this. I have to be productive, or at least... As Chris, productive as Fortnite I can be. Me. Come on, it's. Mm, yeah. uh, I need to. I need to renew my live, otherwise I would. Oh, there you go. Yeah, renew that sucker. 
What does that mean? <laughs> Xbox oh, oh. Live. Oh. Xbox Live it allows you to play online with other with other fellow chaps, but it costs. What like do you have to like pay a subscription? Yeah, it's, yeah, like it's 50 stupid. Bucks a year. The frick? What the what? That's ridiculous. It's like fifty dollars a year, so. No oh, god. That's, I, I mean that you. that's not that bad. Fifty dollars a year, but you know. <laughs> I, uh, you, you still have the console, but you just can't do anything with it. Yeah, That's exactly. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I don't even have an Xbox. All, so I, all I have is a Wii U. <laughs> I know. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's probably better that you don't. I mean, this. I mean, Xbox sucks. Like, my brother's like, Drew, you should get another Xbox. You know, we could play together. I'm like, dude... Uh, no, I'm like, if I have my own Xbox, you know, that's mine and I can bring to college, nah... Mm-hmm. Nah, that's that's just gonna suck my time like crazy. So, have you have me and me and Drew have this? Speaking of going to college and having to bring things with you, me uh-huh. and Drew always have this debate. You know, we talk about um, uh, physical media versus digital media. You know, buying stuff on Blu-ray versus buying. Oh digitally. yes, oh yeah. And we have the debate of question. what is gonna last longer. Like, will you take your movie collection with you on Blu-ray to college and and then have it in adult life? And will even DVD players still be catered to? Blu-ray players still be catered to? Will they even keep releasing Blu-rays? And then also, but then also there's the question that we have of like, both of us, I think, or maybe it's just me, but oh? like, our digital movies are redeemed on accounts that are linked to our family accounts. So yeah. like, no, yeah, what happens when we grow up and become... Independent adults. adults. What happens? I'm 18 what tomorrow. Happens tomorrow so when tomorrow. Houston turns 18. <laughs> gosh dang it! What happens then? And then do we have to get our movies again? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's There's like the be... thing. Like, I own so many movies on mm-hmm. on DVD and Blu-ray, whatever, and I never knew you could do the online thing. Yeah. And then like I've already lost all the cards and stuff. So I'm like, does anybody uh, have yeah. Iron Man three on digital? Does anybody? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, the problem yeah. is that, like, I, I keep trying to do, like, make it... I, I keep trying to have both and not worry about the consistency. So, like, uh-huh. I, in general, prioritize Blu-rays. And when they happen to come with a digital copy, which is a lot more now, I redeem it and I have it. And I'm like, great, win-win, you know. But then there are the movies that don't come with a digital copy or that I bought before I was aware of that like you did. And then I'm in, I'm in the debate of like, do I buy it digitally or do I do I just keep what I have? I don't know. And then exactly. there's, the, there's the ones that I'm too impatient to buy on Blu-ray. Like Black <laughs> Panther is coming out tomorrow on digital. And I feel a very strong urge to just buy it outright. But I have to wait for the Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because I've had this experience in the past where like, I buy the digital, and I'm like, all right, I'll be content without the Blu-ray. It'll be fine. And then I go to Walmart three weeks later, and I see the Blu-ray, and I'm like, that's gorgeous. I should have like waited. And Jedi. then I'd have both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the last year, I bought it on digital, and I don't have the Blu-ray now. Actually, I do. I bought the Steelbook. I bought the Steelbook. I forgot. <laughs> I was so tempted to buy the digital version of Last Jedi. Oh, man. Yeah. But that's but. the problem, is I'm so obsessed with getting the physical copy, and I still want to, because I feel, I feel like... When I spend money, I want something to hold and, like, know that I've bought it and, like, it's mine and yeah. no one can take it away. And, like, uh, you know, it's even mine. if a system crashes, I still have it, you know? Like, what if iTunes went down or something? But at the same time, the movies that I have on digital that I want to watch, I always just pull it up on Apple TV and watch it. I'd never put the Blu-ray in. So, right. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's oh, just a matter man. of, like, necessity versus... Versus just the having your cake and eating it too. So, so for the the last Jedi on the um, the digital version, did you have you watched the score only version? No, I haven't watched it in full. I watched like some sections of it. It's 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 kind of weird. Like it, it's yeah? not very I well bet. edited, honestly. Is it really? Really? Because it kind of cuts out like really abruptly at parts. Um, huh. As as stupid as I think a lot of the campaigns to like do fan edits of the last Jedi are. <laughs> they're doing a really good jo- they're doing a really good job of like remixing the music to make it fit better. Interesting. Huh. I'm, I I I found a channel the other day where they're going through and fixing all these different scenes like the the Leia flying through scene and they like yeah. they cut out the entire her flying through space scene. But I'm like that's kind of stupid. But then they made some like little changes and stuff to the music. I'm like I really like that. I mean, you cut out the really cool flying through space music part. But like you you got all these other things like they add a little flares to like when Huck says stuff to make him more impending and stuff. I'm like hmm. that's really that's really nice. That is pretty good. 
I didn't notice, but every time he talks in the actual movie, like, the music almost completely cuts out. Huh, really? Yeah, so yeah, I'm like, be... I, that's why nobody feels afraid or whatever. I don't yeah, know. that's, that's so, interesting. I, I, I want to check that out for sure. What do you mean by, like, it's poorly edited? Do you mean, like, the music doesn't fade out or doesn't, like, transition? Or, like, I feel it like they reordered cuts? stuff a lot. So it's not the actual, it's not, it's, it's not just the movie with the dialogue taken out? No, it, it is, but, like, it's, like, the raw, it's it's like everything, but they didn't touch the music, like to make it fade out and stuff. Huh. That like is sometimes weird. music music editing, it kind of like, it, it's not always very clean because you know they might score to an early cut of the movie and then they cut stuff out. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're saying and, like, and but when you're seeing it in the movie, then you don't really notice because there's sound design and everything else going on in the background. Yeah, generally. Yeah. Interesting. That's what happens with um. I hate I hate it when soundtracks. I don't know if you've experienced this because it's pretty rare. But like when soundtracks have, um, they're they're meant to be listened to continuously, and so they don't have cuts between the songs. You yeah. know what I mean? So like I have the um, Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince uh, soundtrack, and I I have it on CD actually. I think I was given it as a Christmas present on CD like in two thousand nine or something. That's great. So when you listen to it on CD, like the songs flow together and it's like one cohesive thing because it's it's meant to just flow and the song divides are only like division of tracks but they just transition seamlessly to each other but if you only listen to like one of the tracks individually on itunes or something then it just cuts off abruptly at the end because it's gonna go into a different track but you're stopping it you know yeah which is odd and that was i experienced that when i was editing my harry potter analyze video because i wanted to use several songs from half blood prince and i did but i had to like figure out the best way to fade them out so that it wasn't noticeable because yeah. so many of them just cut off just cut off you know Interesting, so yeah that's been something with my videos is um music choice I, I i honestly find music to be the most difficult part of editing and i always do it yeah. last usually when i'm editing um because like there's always a debate in my head of oftentimes the music choices i use aren't really that noticeable and like when I fade them out it's not that big a deal but at the same time I notice them all the time and I'm like that 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 song faded out abruptly you know even if other people don't and I also think that it adds a lot to something like my only regret with the HP analyzed video is the first half has a ton of music and I think it works really well because of that and so it like kind of helps with the pacing and um gives it some dramatic beats almost but then the second half I I, I had kind of run out of music choices that were not too bombastic that they would be distracting. <laughs> like I had mm-hmm. used all the calming songs from the Harry Potter soundtrack and then I was faced with reusing those or just using songs that would be distracting in the background. So much uh-huh. of the second half doesn't have music and I kind of regret that, but I just didn't huh. know what else to do, you know? So, yeah, yeah, that's kind of so, that. So you don't build your... I guess it wouldn't make sense to build your song or your videos around around the music. So sometimes I do, but yeah, it's it is hard because you've got a predetermined script, and yeah. then it's like, do I write the script based on the music, or do I just yeah. edit the vocal tracks based on the music? Which sometimes I do that, where as I'm editing the vocal tracks, I have the music in the background, and then I like put pauses in places so that it works sure. with the with the music that's playing, but. Yeah. Chris, what did you think of the Last Jedi soundtrack? I don't think we've talked about this. Uh, it's my second favorite Star Wars soundtrack okay. behind Empire, I think. Really? So, That's yeah. interesting. I Is it is it your favorite or mm, I have mixed thoughts on it. I think it's really beautiful in the movie. But I also think and I think David on Twitter has talked about this, um, that like it does repeat a lot like i think the it, yeah. it uses the force theme more than any other star wars movie and yeah. often in places that it's not even really that warranted and it's just kind of for fan service almost or just to remind you of star wars you know and then it's very skimp on the star wars theme you know da, 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 which originally think... was kind of luke's theme and they don't yeah. even use it here very uh-huh. much they just use the force theme you know I've, I've gradually, like, followed more soundtrack accounts on Twitter than, like, anything. And that's the <laughs> one thing that I've... That's the one consensus I've found in Last Jedi. Like, it's fantastic, but the use of the Force theme is overused. And I don't know if the Star Wars theme is played more than, like, a couple times. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and they, they talked about how they, um, 
you know, it doesn't introduce almost any new motifs except for Rose's theme, you know. Um, and then a couple of Rose spare things. Rose has a things. great theme. That's the only good thing about her character. She does have a good, she does have a great theme. It's pretty, it's pretty bloody good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I like it, but at the same time, I think that, you know, something like Empire, they introduce the Imperial March, and they introduce the Asteroid Field, and they introduce everything, you know, and I'm just blown away by that kind of stuff, so... I definitely couldn't I mean, rank it first. Now, now that I think about it, though, like, what could they have added, really? Yeah, that was my question to David, was, like, what did they really need to add? They they could have, like, elaborated on certain themes more, like, given them a little bit more complexity and give them more verses, but, I don't know, like, giving Ray's theme a more um, developed motif or something, an Cause extension. Why, why do you, because why do you need to, like, make new ones if you already have all these established motifs? Because... Because Empire was just the second movie, right? You know, mm-hmm. but this is your eighth, ninth. If you're, well, if you're that that was one. my argument as well. Is that th- he's already dealing with? He's introduced Kylo Ren and Rey and all these yeah. other and First Order and March of the Resistance themes and introducing too many more. Plus, the original Star Wars themes would be really difficult. So, yeah, I yeah. don't, I don't blame him for it for sure. That is that is an important note. Um, mm-hmm. what do you think is the greatest sound what do you think what what series do you think has the greatest soundtrack of all time oh no Lord I'm Rings. very Lord I don't Rings. know how true this is but off the top of my head I'd say Back to the Future really oh yeah hmm. you and I Lord are fellow Rings. Back to the Future nerds we both love Back to the Future yes I have your Back to the Future Lego sticker on my computer actually yeah give <laughs> <you> that quarter <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah, I I like, I really, I mean, the first Back to the Future movie soundtrack is incredible, and I love it so much. The third one is fantastic. But yeah, the third one, I, I don't recall the second one introducing too much that's all that new or great, I, I think, but I, think I love that's the, the third point, one. Though. The second one is supposed to just rehash everything. Yeah. That's, what makes it great. <laughs> that's, that's the point, Houston. Shut up. I do enjoy the musical cues yeah. in the second movie where it's like we're, we're witnessing the same scene occur and then we're hearing the same music beats as well. Uh, <laughs> Even when Alan different Silvestri's perspectives are Silvestri's heyday, happening. let me tell you. Oof. Oh, Silvestri. <clears throat> that brings up a conversation about Silvestri's latest work, Chris. Get Isn't this it? man out of Avengers 4. Oh, no. <laughs> Chris is against Silvestri now. He's against Silvestri oh, no. in Avengers 4. Okay. I was okay, very yeah. upset that Thursday. I was very. I went in <laughs> being like, "This is going to be the greatest music I've ever heard I in know. my life." I, I had several get... tweets about how I was like, "Imagine if Sylvester combines all the themes. That'll yeah. be so ah, good." I had, ah. I had no, I had no doubt in my mind. I was like, "He's definitely going to do it. He can't not do it." And then I walk out. I'm like, "I didn't hear a single thing." Yeah. yeah. Like, and like it's... re-listening to it, you're like, "Oh, that's the same couple chord progressions as Civil War." Oh, that's. Yeah, he used, yeah. This is kind of cool. It's referencing the first, the first Avenger. Yeah, it's got some but... Wakanda. Da 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 da. Of course, he didn't even compose that. They exactly. literally just used a track from yeah, Black li- Panther. Yeah, yeah. But... I, I felt the same thing. I was sitting through the credits at the end, and you see like the featured songs. It's got like the Rubber Band Man, and then like the Wakanda theme by Ludwig Granza. I'm just like, dang it, that list should be so stinking long. You know? Yeah. I mean, it should have exactly. like just. Like Brian Tyler, I, all these guys have done, done these themes that are great, you know. And ah, uh, yeah, I was disappointed as well for sure, because there was the potential there is. I mean, because you have so many good themes. Like people give people give Marvel hate for their themes, but like, but they're bruh, not bad. Bro, yep. this is why they're really good. But see, that's know? what's funny is that the moments when the movie does utilize familiar themes are some of its best moments. So. When the when Thor and Rocket and Groot spoilers when Thor Rocket and Groot show up on the battlefield uh-huh. and they play the Avengers theme full blast the same kind of progression as the Hulk turning into the Hulk in the first Avengers yeah, yeah. and then the team up it was ecstatic you know that's what oh, makes sure. that moment so great same with but uh, then also when, when they when Cap when, first arrives yeah the Cap yeah. theme and then or not the Cap theme the Avengers it's theme the Avengers theme yeah yeah and then that was, as you said that was the Wakanda the one theme good usage, I'm yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm <laughs> Because <laughs> I I, in my honest opinion, I mean, come on, it's too long. I am a show. Yeah, I I and then the Wakanda theme as well. I I still remember being in in like all four showings I've seen of it. Um, yeah, when chills, when you hear man, the drums chills. first start in the background, 
and stands out too much. The audience was like, "Oh, here we go, here we go," you know. No, it was... stands out too much. Get Oof. out. Ooh. Ooh. Oof. No, when your entire thing is orchestral, and then you got that, like. Sure. Yeah, mm. but Wakanda stands out. That's their point. Yeah, but so They're does Doctor Strange. Do we get our guitar? No. Well, yeah, once. Once point. you do. Once you do, actually. Wait, do it's we actually? Like, it's when so the track is this? What when track he, is this? When he... I, I don't know what track it is, but when he fights Thanos and he and he like turns into the many different, you know, multiple versions of I've got of the himself. album right here. We're going <laughs> to... Oh, here we go. We're going <laughs> to turn end, into the, the... The end game? Or? I, I have no freaking idea. Maybe it's that. It's probably that. Um... Maybe it's the one before it. I don't know. But when he turns into the multiple versions of himself, yeah. you hear kind of a little chiming, you know, I don't know what they're called. But yeah, like but a, I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of thing. We, we should still right hear so much just more briefly. than just like that. I mean, it should be. Exactly. I mean, That's what I such, wanted. He's yeah, got yeah. such a good theme. Like, honestly, like, yeah. you know, it's like. Oh, and again, it, it so. leads us back to the problem, which is that. Marvel doesn't have bad themes. It's just nah. that they're not consistent enough for people to remember them. That every frame of painting video where he's like, uh, can you hum any Marvel themes? Like, that, it's, that doesn't mean they're bad themes. It just means people don't remember them. Like, yeah, it's the it's the repetition that's killed him. Like people make the point, like oh Star Wars and all. Yeah, you know how many times you've had the Star Wars theme like layered years, into years. your head. You know, and I mean, people do remember everywhere. the Avengers theme, which is yeah. what is the most consistent one. When I was in the bathroom after um, seeing it a third time or second time or whatever, someone was humming it in the bathroom. <laughs> and the guy next to him in the urinal was like, don't hum that, everybody's dead. <laughs> Truth. Right out in the uh, open. Yeah, uh, it's pretty I love good. It, man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guarantee you, if you go back and say just, I mean, go ask people. Like, I wanted to remake that video. Just say, like, go and ask people on the street. Just say, home Avengers, you know. I guarantee yeah, I think they you. could now. Because I mean, it was featured I mean, so prominently in the marketing campaign this time around as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, Avengers didn't break a billion dollars for no reason, you know? I mean, <laughs> Biggest I mean, opening weekend of all time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even, though, man. even though Homecoming has the best score and, and nobody knows it. I do like the yeah. score a lot. I love, I love, yeah. Both I don't that think it's and the best Doctor score, Strange. but it's good. Is that a hot take? Is that a really hot take? Is, I, I do think that's not? somewhat of a hot take, yeah. I think in what, Houston, what's, that, what's that's the definitely best, a hot then? take. I think Black... Mm, Black I think, Panther... No, get out. Mm. Mm. <laughs> no. Black, Black Panther, Panther has, is. Black Panther has a really cool score because you've got the African vis- the Af- African, it's, it's, African vocals and the drums and all the different types of instruments. And then you got the and pop the, reference with Right, the hip-hop theme. references and kind of up, up, you know, the, the beats that are associated with Killmonger that are more American. Yeah. I think it's really yeah. good. It's, it's um, very not my... Not it's my, probably the... Not my speed. Yeah, it's probably Ooh. the one soundtrack that I've listened to front to back the most. Chris, that's because like, you're mine's, a racist. Mine's last that's because you're a racist, so. Chris. You're a racist. You hear me? You're a racist. I, I, I know that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a Nazi and a homophobe. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof! <laughs> too, too soon? Too <laughs> soon? Too soon? Dodging, <laughs> dodging right around. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, I think Black Panther and... Um, Captain America, the First Avenger, and the Winter Soldier are my top three. Those are my top three. MCU see, see, scores. I don't remember the Winter Soldier. But that's because you haven't seen Winter Soldier that many times, Chris. That's true. That's true. I, I've seen it maybe twice. Yeah, I really enjoy Winter Soldier because they they intertwine the uh, orchestral Captain America theme from the first movie. Right. They bring that in, and then they also bring in. Um, the Winter Soldier theme, which is this awesome, like creepy screaming yeah. sound, almost. No, is it the one that Akash like overused? Screaming. What? Yeah. The one that Akash overused in his videos. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 and then um, there's the cap, the new cap theme, which is the which is so yeah. good. It's so fast paced and everything. I which, love it so much. Where's Houston screaming? Where's my Winter Soldier theme in an Infinity War? <laughs> <laughs> And then, well, that was only associated with the Winter Soldier when he was evil, though. So I don't know. Oh, okay. But Falcon, you know, one piece of musical consistency that people overlook is um, Falcon has a theme, has a motif at least, not a theme, but a motif in Winter Soldier that's set up. It's like, dun 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 And that's, that's done when he, like, flies for the first time and when he's doing it in the battle. And then that plays again in um, the Ant-Man soundtrack when Ant-Man fights Falcon. 
So oh, that's that was fun. at least something to note. Um, Ant Man has a really good theme. Ant Man has a good theme, and that's used in Civil War too. Where when he turns yeah, into yeah. Giant Man, you hear a bit of the bum 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 type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Do we know? I, who's I don't doing know. Ant Man two. Who's? Let me look this up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I don't we, think we, we know yet. Like Maybe. But back to Infinity War though. I think. Uh, yeah, spoilers for Infinity War, but I think Sylvester, if he's doing four, he could still redeem himself because I think they've, I mean, they've shoveled down the cast quite a bit. Same so person. If, if he doesn't, I mean, he's got to, especially like with the next one, bring in, I think he could. It's much easier task because he's gotten rid of so many themes, right? Just bring well, in some right. of the I mean, more it, prominent it does Captain bring in the Thor. criticism, yeah, it does bring him you know. in the criticism that we had of Star Wars that we were just talking about where... There were so many themes to talk about, to themes to include that like it'd be so hard to pick and choose. But sure, I would like. But it I would, works. I would wanted would have wanted to hear at least at the very bare minimum the Guardians Iron theme Man. with Iron the Man. Avengers. Iron <laughs> Man. Well, at see, least at least they used. I would Iron love. Man I love. love I would. But I would love Iron Man's. But like you have three Iron Mans, which are all great. You know, it's so, like which one do you Iron use? Man three. You know, they're all great. I like agree. with Guardians, like they, I mean, they've stayed consistent, just like the Avengers. You know, so yeah. I definitely people don't remember the Guardians that. theme just because of the pop songs that are associated with exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. overshadow it. What's yeah. what's that's Guardians the theme? The theme I'm hooked song. on a feeling. <laughs> but, uh, da, da, da. Partially, that's Marvel's fault, obviously, and they. I mean, let's be real; they can't not market that movie with pop music. You know, but no, well, sure. they, they spent so much money on it; they might as well. A the theme's yeah, great, though, that's man. True. The Guardians theme is underrated, I think. Dun, 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 dun. I think, I think dun, the dun, Sharknado dun. theme is overrated. Is overrated. <laughs> Sharknado! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no, actually, though, it's underrated. I, oh, I think this is, We're not I think joking it's one, here. We're not joking it's the one here. From the, it's the one from the second one, I think. I have only seen the first Sharknado. I do well, not have Well, let time. me tell you, the second one's better. Mm. But is so, it, Some so, might say, is it the Empire Strikes Back of the series? And I, unironically, hang on, let me find the... the the series ratings. Oh, also, I googled the Ant Man. The same dude d- is doing both of them, Chris Beck. So, oh, Chris Beck. Okay. Uh, we're okay. gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get thematic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Consistent. He'll keep it consistent. Yes. That would That's be nice shark, if he did, shark. though. He if he doesn't, so, there's gonna be some riots. He needs to give yeah. it a wasp theme. I'd love a I'd love a defined wasp theme. That'd be pretty. I good. want it to be higher. I want it to be like almost annoying. Like it's like a wasp in your ear. <laughs> I don't know. Like what a like you got your Ant Man because your Ant Man's like. Well, you know, ant versus a wasp. Which one's gonna make more like high pitched noise? Your yep. wasp. It's Chris, be... I want it to be <laughs> annoying. <laughs> I do. I just want okay, it to be so... annoying. Just annoy the heck out of me, back. That's you actually know? what they say about the um, Professor Umbridge theme in the Harry Potter series. Was they wanted to make it the most annoying theme possible? That was just irritating to hear when no, you okay. saw her on screen, which works because yeah, really you does. still making fun of me now, Hitchcock. Oh. <laughs> I mean, um, Umbridge is an evil person. Wasp isn't, so. Good well, point. she's a woman, so. <laughs> you know, oh, I, 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 I want Spider-Man. Oh. I want Spider-Man themed to be annoying because he's a spider and the spiders are blah. Just, just make it annoying, okay? <laughs> oh, good one. That's, Got that's him. how you sound, Chris. Got him. Gosh, okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so Shark Sharknado One has a hot eighty-two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. And the I actually one. remember when my family first saw Sharknado in Redbox, we decided, I mean, we, we had seen it in Redbox multiple times, and we yeah, would always know, laugh uh, and be like, goes, that's so... He, Houston goes to the Redbox to watch We do movies. go to Redbox, he yeah. He doesn't and this get was the back in the day it. when it was more popular. Yeah. We would <laughs> go to a... Redbox, and every oh time we would look for a movie, we'd see Sharknado on there, and we'd be like, that's well, so ridiculous, you, you I can't believe it. that exists. And then we looked at the Rotten Tomatoes page, and we were like, I... 82 percent what yes. and then i think that's when we rented it and watched it and it was absolutely awful Great. and we loved it yeah so the the audience scores are significantly lower than the critic scores well because the audience <laughs> isn't aware that it's satire of sorts satires in yeah. quotes but you know yeah. i like the second one because it parody. fully embraces the satire like mm. like fully it's amazing but do like they some become? Dude? Do they become too self-aware? Like I don't know, but at, at one point the dude they're at like a at a at a, be- a baseball stadium and it starts it starts sharknadoing, right? 
And some <laughs> dude, some, some, some dude, <laughs> some dude started, who they set up dude, five minutes ago. Started sharknadoing, bro. Yeah, so bro, that, do you even sharknado? Happened, so. <laughs> is, Continue, Chris. Sorry. Yes. They, they <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just sorry. They set up a dude who's like, I had to retire without like making my dad proud in baseball or something. And then, like, this one dude is the last one in the baseball stadium, and everybody had to evacuate, and a shark's coming at him. He picks up one of, like, the giant souvenir bats, and, like, <laughs> he, he, he hits the, the shark into the home run thing, and it's the greatest, <laughs> it's the greatest five minutes in that entire movie, but... That is oh amazing. Gosh. That I sounds mean, so obnoxious, I cannot either. Yeah, but then oh, you got, like, your blood spatter, too. Oh, man. That is, that's pretty, pretty glorious. For some, it, it no, it not for some, for everybody. You just have to watch it to know what I'm talking Sharknado about. Sharknado is a universally glorious brand, if you will. It, I feel it like really Sharknado is. is one of those movies that would be better with friends. Yeah, yeah. With what? With better friends. with friends. Oh, with it. Just watch it with yeah. like a group of your friends. You know, just Definitely. like the room. Yeah. Uh, got him. A room esque screening. I really want to attend one of those screenings of the room. But it's also got a lot of nudity, which I feel like I would yeah. be uncomfortable with, <laughs> especially in a large crowd with uh, with but... people like cheering the whole time, probably. Right, but it would still be, it'd still be fun. I bet <laughs> it'd still be, be fun, right? Right. But objectively, the uh, Batman vs Superman soundtrack by Hans Zimmer is the best. Ah! It is pretty good. I mean, let's be real. I, I mean, if we're talking I... Hans Zimmer, the Dark Knight trilogy is where it's at. No, oh, of I don't course. Think so. So it's Batman versus Superman. Of course, that's not really a theme. It's just a motif. But you know, it's not really a theme. It's just a motif. Yeah, like Thanos. Thanos is five hundred motifs, but everybody's like, he's he's musically complex. I'm like, when right, I am. Infinity Stone has when none of them motif, are repeated. Okay? I am a little bit baffled by the people who are like, Thanos has a clearly defined theme. <laughs> All right, he's got one some motifs. Repeated. That occur once or twice, but yeah, yeah. look. Like his uh, as far as the Infinity War soundtrack, soundtrack goes, Man. yeah, exactly. I, I, I think I I was pleased with it despite my complaints because I think it has a lot of gravitas and it does add a lot to the film and gives yeah. it a lot of emotion and, and a lot of drama. And I feel like it but just feels more. weighty and operatic, you know. Um, sure. But at the same but time, we wanted more. I'd love to see a fan edit, you know, with the actual yes. themes placed in yes. wouldn't that be great <laughs> give me this talk about somebody some out there edits. yeah like imagine so imagine great. not even like not even just hearing the themes in full blast because that would be glorious where you're hearing you know the the avengers theme I intertwined with the guardians theme intertwined with the doctor strange theme and stuff that'd be so cool I but at the same time that, even though. just the motifs just occurring or, just casually or, where like doctor strange steps into frame you hear like that kind of thing <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, dude, that'd be so cool. Like even just chord progressions, like because in in Rogue One, oh for sure, you don't in Rogue One you don't hear like any of the specific themes. Because I, I think Houston actually sent me that video where he took the yeah it was good Star Wars chord progressions and then he chose different notes in there and that's how he wrote the original themes for Rogue One. Yeah, like he used like musical basses, whatever you want to call it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's so cool to make yeah. it sound so similar. But yeah, like reversed it or turned it upside down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. if he did that with the different so character themes, it'd be uh, fantastic. Yeah. And same be. thing with you know Ray's theme, where Ray's theme is like the Force theme, but just continued, like and it's it's an evolved version of the Force theme almost. Yeah. And then and then Jedi Steps is another evolved version of that. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Where it 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 exists to even just barely subconsciously, you're reminded of what it's supposed to imply, even if you don't realize you're being reminded of it. You know, exactly. like that's brilliant. That is John Williams being brilliant. <laughs> I, I I still can't believe that that level of artistry. It's so good. Yeah, and yeah, he did it. I mean, the whole story is he had no clue what he was doing, right? He just had to like do it and fit it into the movie or whatever, right? Like he didn't have like. What I hear that it was it was it was probably one video that you sent me, Houston. There was they were talking about Williams or something, and he didn't like it was either he didn't know the script or something, or he didn't know well, where it was going. Well, it's it's the speculation or... that Williams didn't know if Ray would turn out to be a good guy or a bad guy, or who who parents yeah, were yeah. and oh, stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, he, he was so, preparing for things right in the because future of that. He, that could... he created ah, different so possibilities in which if she was a Kenobi, he could tie her theme into that 
theme. If she yeah, was a so Skywalker, she, he could tie her theme into that theme. If she turned out evil, he could tie her theme into the dark side theme type stuff, you know. Which That's is pretty so brilliant. genius, dude. So Amazing genius. Stuff. John Williams, man, really is yeah. the greatest. Yeah. But, yeah. Is that... I, we, we, we said we were going to try to keep these episodes under an hour, <laughs> but, you know, it, that yeah. obviously isn't going to happen. We're knocking on the door here. But, um, I mean, there's so much that could be said about. I mean, totally. there's so many time tracks that we haven't even touched on. You right. Know? Lord of the Rings. Oh, beautiful. Um, I mean, all Pirates of the Caribbean. Of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Night at the Museum. <laughs> Night at the Museum. The Night at the Museum soundtrack is actually good, isn't it? it it's really it good. Is. Alan, it, it's Sylvester, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at my playlist. <laughs> I have a movie score um, playlist as well. Let me look at what's on it. I have mine called the the soundtrack soundtrack. Oh, the soundtrack okay. soundtrack. Yeah. I don't. I don't have yeah. no playlists. I also have a specifically well, Marvel you're... scores playlist. You know what's underrated? The X Men theme from from the X Men movies. Yeah, I really I'm not enjoy familiar it. with it, but I'm familiar with it. Bum ba da ba dum bum ba da ba dum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like it could be from a Spider Man theme. Oh, dude, yeah, even uh, yeah, it does. That's so Spider Man. That's so it's so glorious when they because the X Men movies even have often have these like very clear intros right where they show the title cards and stuff and they just play that theme in full blast and I remember being in Danny Elfman's original Spider Man theme. Can't beat it. Can't you can't beat it. No. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a different character than Jakino's, but uh-huh. it's it's good. It's okay. Perfect. I, I enjoy the X Men theme because it can be intertwined with things really easily because it's only a couple, a few notes. Like it's just you can intertwine it just by going ba da ba dum. Like that's that's all it is. Is dun da 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 dun. So like. At the end of the Fox logo with some of the X Men movies, um, I think with Days of Future Past it goes. Like that kind of thing. That's it's so cool. cool. That's real cool. And then Dang. in the in Days of Future Past as well, like it's like playing this emotional music and it's just kind of bearing down and then you just hear a little 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 flicker of the ba ba dum right as the X Men start to kind of come back. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, I That's love fantastic. little motifs like that. Yeah, sure. have you? Dude, Logan, Logan's listen, have got you a seen really Days of Future Past too. much? Logan, Logan is good. Oh, yeah, that piano based, you know, man. Yeah, uh, Marco Beltrami is an underrated oh, yeah. artist. He uses a lot of unique stuff, um, unique instruments. I have. Have both of y'all watched the score documentary? Yeah, yeah, I have. Have you, Chris? Like the, the what now? The <laughs> documentary score about film scores. I have not. No. You really you, need to. You it's need on to iTunes it. and Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, it's uh, they left out some of the greatest of all time. But right. Still. Yeah. <laughs> Sharknado. Sharknado, of course. But yeah, no, they interview um. I think I think Brian Tyler's in it. Actually, in fact, yeah, he is. Um, yeah. Brian Tyler is actually a major part of it. So is Tyler Bates. So is um, Hans. Hans Zimmer's in a little bit, I think. Right. He's briefly, yeah. Marco How, Beltrami is in it. Yeah. Lots of different. Famous composers and they completely shank Sylvester and Giacchino though. Yeah, but they do give a lot of lot of history to Williams because obviously so iconic oh, stuff. Oh sure. Um, but yeah, in that documentary, they kind of they talk about how Beltrami. The it actually starts within uh, a, a movie that Beltrami is working on where he's using like a piano that's on top of a mountain. That oh, yeah, plays dude, that the notes so into like cables that run yeah. from the top of the mountain to the bottom, and it like hmm. records the sound through the cables. It's like crazy, and it's so he, cool. he's just a big fan of like cool sounds like that that are interesting and it out. unique. You, you totally dig it, Chris. Yeah. Oh yeah. Have Have you listened to the Ten Cloverfield Lane soundtrack? Have you seen Ten Cloverfield Ooh. Lane? I've I've seen it. I have not listened to it. It's a nice. That soundtrack. is one of my favorite soundtracks of the of the past five years or so like, is it really i adore it it's so good and it's got this great like kind of hitchcockian vibe and there yeah, are a good three or four memorable motifs throughout and he again is someone who uses um really unique did it? instruments bear mccreary bear, bear mccreary yeah yeah he also did the agents of shield theme which is pretty good Oh, that's a good theme. Yeah, but he again, he uses a lot of really interesting instruments where he uses like a a thing called a blaster beam that's like this metal <laughs> hollowed out thing that you can make you can bang on to make sounds and he uses that to um 
make the sounds of the bunker that sound kind of claustrophobic. And then he's got this like weird German, I'm, I'm not mem- remembering it correctly probably, but it's like some sort of weird like German version of a violin or something that he huh. uses to play Michelle's theme. And it's like, it's so good. I love it so much. It's great. Yeah. So how about the Whiplash theme or the Whiplash soundtrack? Sorry. Whiplash soundtrack is real good. Oh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a it's not like a movie soundtrack exactly, since it's so intertwined with the narrative. But it's it's so but good. It's, but it's it's so much like La La Land in like the fact that the music is the story. Right. Yeah. You just watched like, the, the... Whiplash recently, didn't you? Uh, Whiplash was a couple of months ago, and then I watched La La Land my first time all the way through the other day. Oh, yeah! yeah. Uh, so good. So good, so both good. of them! So, and then this week I'm going through Pirates of the Caribbean, so that'll be a good time. That will be a good time. You're, you're getting a good dose of soundtracks and stuff. Yeah. What did you think of, of both Whiplash and La La Land? Whiplash is one of my favorite movies of all time, I think. Yeah. That is and one of the most enjoyable movie experiences I've ever had. Yes. It's just exhilarating. I, I wish I could have saw that in a theater. Like, yeah. I don't know, going back and like looking at it, I'm like, that's a movie I would definitely want to see. Any th- same with same with Baby Driver. Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't get a chance to see that in theaters because it was, yeah. it was rated R or whatever, so I couldn't like go to by myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Baby Driver is so fun, too. That's also an exhilarating thing. When I, I had a small group over a few months ago, it was like two months ago or so, and I was like, I was gonna just gonna show one of the leaders the first ten minutes of it, just the first opening car chase, and I was like, you just gotta see this. It's so good. It'll make you want to watch the rest of the movie. And I showed him that, and then he had to leave, but everyone else in the small group was so, had not seen the movie either, and they were so intrigued by it that we ended up just watching the whole thing. <laughs> so oh that gosh. was that was quite quite enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Baby Tribe is one of the more rewatchable movies recently. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Like I could just watch that oh, almost yeah, sure. on repeat without getting sick of it. I notice so. a new thing every time. And also, when I initially saw it, I gave it like a mediocre review on my YouTube channel, and that is one yeah, of the yeah. biggest oh, regrets yeah. of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I still I, I still feel guilt about that, and I, I think I've made it unlisted or something because I'm I'm so departed from that opinion now. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, should we should we wrap it up? What do you think? Uh, 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 <laughs> awkward silence. Uh, I think the awkward silence says My that we should wrap it up. My phone is at 11%, so it's it's going to be wrapping up here regardless. Mine is it, mine is at 17. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm on my computer. So. Ah, oh. get out of town. Classic. Got him. All right. Well, um thank you for being on, Chris. This was yeah, very fun. Sure. Yeah. It's it's clear yeah. that we're all very passionate about movie soundtracks, and it's good to yeah, mm-hmm. talk to people who are because many so much more could be said. Take them for granted, so right? Much I more, mean, we could do so two much has more been left unsaid. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but where can people find find you on on Twitter? For for some more hot takes on the Infinity some more War hot soundtrack, takes on the sound, yeah, on the Sharknado vibe, yeah, and the Infinity War soundtrack and how Alan Silvestri needs to uh, never mind. Okay, um, <laughs> Eli Two Studios on Twitter. There you go. Yeah, I am stuff. at yeah. Blockbusted Pod on Twitter. Um, you know what I did realize? We forgot to do this last week, Houston. I do. I just remembered that just now. <laughs> <laughs> we completely forgot. That's we assume everyone is. knows our identity at this yeah, point. Exactly. We're just I mean, celebrities. Nerd under stream seven. No, that's not even. <laughs> nerd, nerd oh, yeah, you've changed stream it. Stream seven. I oh, can't even God. say it, man. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> you use Twitter so infrequently at this point that, like, yeah, it's. Oh well, it's I'm, almost I mean, unnecessary. I'm, I'm on Twitter all the all the time. I just don't. Huh. Uh, I I get these little bursts where I go on and like just massively tweet for a day, but then that's true. Go silent. I'm so. like that for a week. I need to. I'm I'm on one of those right now. I need to calm down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I have taken a bit a bit of Houston's a never never down. So, oh uh, yeah, I am. I really need to make myself just take a break a little bit because it does. It takes so much it of sucks. my time. Yeah, makes me procrastinate. Really, but anyway, on that on that happy note, <laughs> on that happy note of life, thank you for listening, everyone. Um, we're doing this little outro here, even though again, this is a structureless podcast. No structure here. I mean, there is structure, oh but we're just trying to avoid it. Um, 
next week, we're back to a weekly thing. We'll do something else. Yeah, we'll see hopefully. what happens. We'll have some other ideas, probably. Mm. Hitchcock suggested yeah. this topic for the record, so that was yes, good, yeah, good going yeah, on. Yeah, you're part. welcome, everyone. You're welcome. Well, good, good. You're welcome. All, all the, oh, that's Houston another good soundtrack. Of, yeah, we Houston can't have a, you, Chris, a Chris though, episode without singing You're Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's I did Jacob, invite Chris. Jacob sucks, actually. But. Yeah, yeah, boy. <laughs> you're welcome for the, for the prequels, the... Oh, yeah. Cloverfield Paradox Clover, yeah. and the, the Cloverfield ARGs. Rap. The Cloverfield <laughs> Rap. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, we will see you later. Say your what you is this? What even is oh, this? I guys? got it. I say, what you? Chris does listen to the podcast. <laughs> he stole oh, you. Got him All good, this time. Man. Got him good. Got him. Say it, Hitchcock. Say it. Just wing it. Hashtag wing it. However you what want to wing it. What even is this, guys? It. Yep. We will see you later.